Hi, uh, here's an example of a spreadsheet I've built that might help with the comment generation and moderation of the personal project. Um, as we know, we need to moderate the work that's submitted by students. And it can be quite challenging to do, especially if we're working in, in remote learning mode. Um, and as we submit students' work for samples, we also need to have a comment for each of the criteria that justifies why the awards, the grades were awarded. The way it's set up is that we have two tabs at the bottom. The first marking tab is where we will um, create our class lists and everything that we create here gets mirrored in the second sheet so nothing has to happen here. We can choose who the moderator or the marker is, who does each student and then there's a log kept of all of those things. As the markers go along this first section of tab of uh, columns here is a compilation of the comments that are generated. So it uses a formula called concatenate and it pulls together elements from different cells. And then reading that, the marker can decide from their perspective which of these best fits that student's work. In order to make this happen, we go to the different components. And these components are created from a comment bank. So what I've done here is taken the four criteria, broke them into their strands, and each strand into its kind of relevant components. This is based on what's in the descriptors um, and also what's in the examiner's reports. Um, you can go in and edit these um, to better suit your context. You might want to make them shorter or longer. Um, you might want to add extras for yourself. Anything that you add on this sheet is mirrored in all of the student work that's selected later on. So if you're editing here, uh, be careful. There might be some typos or some grammar problems. Um, don't worry about it because the only ones that will get um, read or sent away uh, will be the, the few students that get selected and you would edit those carefully anyway. Um, so what's happening here, you build your assessors list in there for all the different people that you've got. Later on I have some conditional formatting that's based on the November 2019 um, grade boundaries. So back to my first marker. This person can choose out of these components of that strand what do they think are the most appropriate descriptors. You don't have to put something in for every box. It's okay if you leave it something blank if it's not relevant to the decisions that have been made about the student. If you think a piece of work is particularly strong or particularly weak then it is important that the comment reflects that. Other things that you can do inside of this too is if I can choose this one, but maybe I want to modify it for that student, um, then maybe this one um, has relied too much on YouTube videos. And I can add that little note. This has changed this comment. It hasn't changed the comment bank. So it reflects only in this student's work. So when this little orange triangle comes up invalid, don't worry about it. It's only changed for this student. When I go back now, using the summation of all those little comments, I now have a comment for Criterion A investigating. So the concatenate formula has put this together for me. What else has happened as I go through the entire student is I have a formula here called sumlen, um, and it's looking at the length of the characters. In total, for four criteria, there's about 1,200 characters used there. That might be relevant later on. So the first marker has done their work, the second marker has done their work. If we come onto the assessment decisions tab, what I can see here is the first marker comment is copied, the second marker comment is copied, the second marker grade is copied, the first marker grade is copied. And then we look at those comments together and decide what's the most appropriate final level of achievement. Um, maybe based on the modified comments that we've got there, let's say a for this this person okay um, that's added up automatically and the conditional formatting will change the codes you see there's that kind of deep red for a zero we'll go all the way up to a bright yellow for a seven and here are the grade boundaries from last year I would have to put that one in manually finally then if as we've put in all of our data to IBIS some students will be sampled and then we'll need to write comments for the criteria for them. We can't write too long, and so I've put an indicator here of the total comment length. 
and to see how it works. Okay, so I can see here uh, comment and reason. And as I go along and do that for each of the four criteria, just for the students that have been sampled, it's keeping account of everything as we go. So there you go. Um, the P2 quick mark um, spreadsheet, maybe it will help. Hopefully it does. Um, and it might reduce a little bit of stress or ambiguity, especially as we're working across the world right now. Thank you.